Well, um, I really, really like your paper, and uh, it is. Oh shoot! What's the what's the title here? It's um. The it. Artificial intelligence. There I we think. go. Yep the the metaphysics of artificial intelligence, and um, it's a it's a really good chapter uh, in this book. Um, and I had the book with me too. It's ontology. Shoot, do you remember the the name of the book? I see. That's if this was the BBC, uh, I'd get fired. Yeah. And the ontology of properties. Consciousness. There we go. Ontology of properties. It's in my notes somewhere and I can't find it. Um, there it is. Okay. Thank you for that. So um, I'm really excited about this because you brought up this amazing point that everyone in artificial intelligence theory, uh, they always focus on artificial thought and, and they neglect artificial thinkers because if there's going to be artificial thought, there, there should be an artificial thinker. And you kind of motivate this, this argument by saying, uh, or this intuition, whatever, by saying, look, there's... In natural thought, like the one that the ones that you and I are having right now, there's a there's a natural thinker having those thoughts, and so unless there's a really good argument for why there can be thought without thinkers, we should think that there should be an artificial thinker if there's artificial thought. Does that does that sound right? Is that is that uh, your intuition there? Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's not so much an intuition because it, it's sure. not really a claim. It's just okay. What is this? The 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 discussion about the possibility of artificial intelligence or, or is about that is real artificial intelligence, is about intelligence or mental phenomena themselves. So the question is, uh, could uh, an electronic computer produce something mental? Mm -hmm. Is there something about the nature of the mental, of mental phenomena, like consciousness or belief or preference or whatever it might be, that restricts it to biological organisms or whatever the case might, whatever that might be? Or could it be realized in an artificial electronic substrate? Yeah. Okay. And that's a perfectly fair question, I suppose. But there's another question quite independent of that, which is uh, if, if, if artificial thought were possible, what would the artificial thinkers be like? Because for there to be thinking is for there to be a thinking thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so it seems that we just, just for there to be motion is for, for there to be something that moves or, or for there to be life is for there to be something that's alive, a living thing. Yeah. So if there, could, if there could be artificial intelligence there must it must then there could be artificially intelligent beings and what sort of being could it be that would be artificially intelligent and uh that question might be difficult to answer in fact there might not be a very good answer yeah. uh, but there has to be a good answer to that question if artificial intelligence is possible yeah and i love that so and I, nobody I, discusses that question what, what i call the question of artificial thinkers right and it's such a huge question and when you said that i thought you know surely there's well someone you know what and it's just it's a really really good question it's it's pretty amazing that it's been so overlooked i wonder um just tangentially here i wonder what you what you make of descartes uh cogito because because he brings up a same a similar type of thought in in his uh cogito or cogito experiment thought experiment if uh, if i'm thinking then then i exist as a thinker and then he goes in for substance dualism which i know you're not going to like there um or cartesian dualism whatever but is that a similar move going on here where you say if there's artificial intelligence, there, there has to be an artificial thinker? There's, yes, there's some connection, yes. I mean, I think the Cogito is Descartes' best argument. Okay, uh, that's awesome, wow. I, th I think it's one of the best arguments in the whole of philosophy. The, 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 uh, uh, it, it, it's not that people, people, people don't object to it, but, but it, it, it's, it's, it was clearly right to, to think that you can't think you exist and be wrong about it. Yes. Amen, man. It's so good to, to hear you say that you exist. Yeah. What, what yeah. kind of, and, and, and most people accept that e even if they challenge the argument, not very many people think that uh, they don't exist. Right. <laughs> they don't usually disagree with the conclusion or if they do, they might start disagreeing with it just because they, they they've seen his argument for it. I mean, yeah. as I point out somewhere in the paper, oftentimes the best way to make an, a, a, a philosopher suspicious about a certain claim is to give a positive argument for it. <laughs> That's great. Well, so there, initially there was this uh, there's this claim that all that that Descartes showed was that there's thinking going on. Um, what do you mean? I, and I think of the the cogito as more of like a transcendental argument, where it's like it, it's it's presupposed like th there's a thinker presupposed if there is thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Swinburne says something like, you know, uh, there's a substance if there's this property of thinking because properties don't just free float around. Um, but, but what do you make of that claim that there's just thinking going on that that's really what it's showing? Uh, well, of course, you can you can give a cogito style argument for the existence of 
thinking. I mean, there couldn't be the, the uh, 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 it's, it's, it's obvious from the fact that we're asking the question that thinking is going on. Mm. You might say, okay, so that is how it's just that there was thinking, and 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 the sort of objection to the cognitive argument that you're alluding to is roughly this, okay, that 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 th th there might be a process of thinking going on, which is not the thinking of any being. It's just it, it's just thinking. Thinking goes on in the way that uh, wind happens. So it's not as if something is blowing. It's, it's just it's just wind. It, it, it's just something happening. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, it's thinking that's happening and maybe thinking sort of congeals in a certain way. So th th that's all the thinking going on here, uh, which effect, which, 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 which uh, has a certain sort of unity to it. And there's certain thinking going on there. Uh, I can't point to you. I don't, I don't, I don't want to point to. Uh, and that's got a certain sort of unity, but, but the thinking is not an activity of anything. It's just activity. Mm -hmm. uh, or at best, it's an activity of something that's not itself thinking. It's 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 an activity of just like wind is an activity of air molecules. Thinking might be an activity of brain cells. Yeah. Uh, but but it's an activity of lots of things, lots of little things, none of which is thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay. So although no, I couldn't think I was thinking and be sorry, I couldn't think I exist and be wrong about it. There could be an occurrence of the thought I am thinking, or even I exist. Uh, which was false because uh, it didn't refer to anything because the, the first person thought I doesn't refer to anything. Yeah. Okay. That's a, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a possible view. And that's, a, that's the main objection, I suppose, to Descartes' Cogito argument, but that's a pretty wild claim, I suppose, if you think about it. That, that's what I would think. Yeah. Uh, 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 and pe the old pe people would only consider that claim, I suppose, just because they want to find some objection to Descartes' argument. Because you know, a philosopher can't see, can't uh, look at an argument without trying to formulate an objection. That's that's what we're trained to do, like a text. Right. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, so doesn't, doesn't just take off their hat and say, "Yes, well done, René Descartes. Uh, you win the prize." Yeah, yeah. What? Well, um... That's that's awesome. I, I thanks for for indulging me on that. So this your your whole paper doesn't really uh, doesn't hinge on whether Descartes was right or not. But I thought it'd be a, a fascinating thing because because we are saying, look, if there's a artificial thought, there there needs to be an artificial thinker. And then you can just stipulate, look, unless you come up with a really good argument that shows those two can come apart. And so you know, go ahead and work on that, you know, philosophy professors who are listening. But yes. you know, in the meantime, we can continue. I haven't come across an advocate of artificial intelligence who denies that there are artificial thinkers. They, okay. They, they, I suppose it's partly because they're not really thinking about metaphysics. That's true. Yeah. Uh, that's... Uh, and the, the and and it's only a metaphysician who would question whether thinking requires a thinker. Hey guys, thanks for watching that clip from the Parker's Pensies podcast. If you enjoyed it, leave me a like and drop a thinking emoji in the comments, or let me know what you thought. If you did enjoy it, if you learned something, you're going to love the full conversation over on my main channel, Parker's Pensies.